and welcome to the first annual Open Sim Community Conference uh, 2013. Glad to see all you out there in attendance. Uh, if you would, uh, at the end of the, uh, the speech, uh, we will take questions. If you will, I am those questions to me. Um, I will facilitate that and give that to our guest speaker. He is a research scientist with Intel Labs with over 40 years of software development experience. He has re most recently been focusing on enhancing the scalability of virtual world experience and is also the developer of our Bullet Sim physics engine. Please welcome Robert Adams. Good morning, all. Uh, this is Robert Adams. Um, and uh, if uh, you can't hear me, speak up and uh, we'll um, uh, have uh, the uh, technical people fix it up. So I'm here uh, today to talk about uh, distributed scene graph. And uh, this is a uh, project that we've been working on at Intel. And uh, we will um, today, um, what I will talk about is uh, how distributed scene graph solves the scalability problem. Um, I'll say a little bit about uh, how DSG works. And then I'll talk about how you could use DSG in your grid. That is, DSG is uh, not a different technology, is not separate from OpenSim, but actually it's an Open Simulator plugin that uh, you can uh, add to your grid for scaling. And then I'll of course get pointers to resources so you can uh, um, incorporate it in your grid and uh, use it. So of course what we want uh, in our virtual worlds is more, bigger. Uh, we, have, we enjoy our uh, small groups of people but there are usages for large um, numbers of people. So you want thousands of interacting users. If you have large projects or large events like this, you want uh, lots of scripted objects um, that uh, interact. Um, like there was a project to do artificial life forms and you want hundreds and hundreds of plants, hundreds and hundreds and thousands of plants. Uh, you might want to do large data um, visualization in the world. And, or uh, for many different things. And you might want to do large-scale simulations, like maybe a whole uh, solar system. And sometimes you really do want to crowd, not just for events. Uh, this slide is an uh, experiment that we did with 500-plus uh, avatars walking around a city for doing um, crisis control, how to manage... Um, teams, uh, you know, teams of families, how you'd find each other. And this is, um, you know, you, you just need hundreds of users to properly model a city or uh, some event. So in looking at this, of all the problems with virtual worlds, Intel thought it was interesting that scalability was an interesting vector to approach. Uh, both in the interaction, how to get many people to interact, in the granularity from very small uh, to very large uh, events, and also in the fidelity, how to make interaction better, how to make um, um, the uh, physics, you know, uh, can you play a virtual game of ping pong if you uh, really had uh, better fidelity of physical interaction and, and uh, response. So these are all dimensions of scalability. Uh, and the main one that we um, talked about in, uh, or worked on in the DSG is the interaction, that is adding more um, avatars. So here is a, um, this slide is kind of a picture of the existing uh, architecture of Open Simulator. So you have your grid services shown at the top, and then there's a, a some simulator with some regions in it, and the regions have physics and script happening on it. And then there's a, a whole subsystem dealing with talking to all the uh, users. And 
there are several bottlenecks um, in this implementation. Of course, the CPU uh, that is used for the simulator, like physics, can get overloaded, or you can have too many scripts. Uh, and just the general interaction of things within the virtual world can overload the CPU. The connection between the uh, simulator and the um, uh, users is also a great bottleneck because it scales exponentially as the number of users increase. I mean, if you think about it, if there's a hundred people in a region and one person moves, the simulator receives that one move but then has to send it out 99 times. So if you add another person, that 101, that 101st person moves, now you have to send it out 100 times. And so as you add people, the actual amount of, of bandwidth needed grows exponentially. And that puts a phenomenal load on a single simulator. And so these are the various, the monolithic simulator that architecture that we use in Open Simulator, it has many choke points. And the conventional solutions to these choke points are to either spatially partition the virtual world, which is, which is how Open Simulator and Second Life did it by creating regions. So you don't have to simulate the whole universe on one computer, you can just simulate one region. And another common way of doing it is sharding which is making duplicates of the same place and then somehow allowing people to interact with that place independently. And both of these have some uh, pros and cons. The approach that, that uh, DSG took was to break apart the simulator. That is, what if we took physics and the script and the clients and we separated them out into separate instances? We spatially break the world into what we call quarks, for a lack of a better term. And these quarks can be any size. Um, that um, It can be 8 by 8 or 16 by 16. And you have multiple instances of, of a quark. We've, uh, so a quark can be up to region size, and we've done a lot of work with just region size quarks. But you allocate the actors to quarks. That is, physics doesn't have to be the whole region. Physics can only can be some of the quarks in a region. And so you could like have two physics engines in one region. Then DSG has a... a uh, infrastructure which synchronizes the properties between the quarks. So I'm kind of just diving into this. Uh, I'll, I'll give some examples up here in, um, uh, in a second. So, and what DSG does is build on the existing open simulator structure. Um, so DSG separates the virtual world simulation components so they can be mixed and matched as needed. So rather than getting one region that has one physics engine and one script, you could have one region with multiple physics engines or multiple script engines as needed. So some of the terms we use in uh, the distributed scene graph implementation is we call the, the scene graph the world, that is all the objects in the world make up uh, the common graphics term of a scene graph. The spatial partition of it, we call a quark. An actor is someone that is a, is a piece of code or, or person that changes properties of things in the world. So like uh, a user pushes the forward button. So the user is an actor that's moving the avatar forward. Or uh, gravity is affecting a object, so the physics engine moves the object down. So the physics engine is an actor. And so, um, these actors, the actors don't just have to be these script engine, physics engines, client managers. They can do other things, like um, someone proposed a, an explosion actor. And what that actor does was, is uh, when an explosion happens somewhere, it applies outward force to all the objects around. And 
it just acts on things in the world. Uh, we do have done universe or uh, solar system simulations with doing end body simulations. So one of the actors was a thing that moved, that interacted objects but based on gravity. And then we have a synchronization system that synchronizes the um, the contents of the various instances of the quarks that have their actors. So here, here's kind of an example. So say that um, this is an area. You can see um, this region or this region or this virtual world area um, that has thing, uh, people on it or activities happening on it. So there's some areas with moderate activity. There's some kind of party locations. And there's some areas where not much is happening. And so this is the usual thing one gets of uneven simulation requirements. Here's one way of breaking that up with DSG. Uh, one actor I didn't mention was an actor we call the persistence actor, whose job is to keep the um, contents of the world saved. So if there's any problems, the persistence actor can... Uh, or restore them or keep them so you reboot it you can get everything off the disk we have two script engines one doing most of the area and one and another one handling just the busy area that has lots of people in it uh, there are two physics engines one for the larger area where not much is happening and one for concentrated on the area where there's lots of activities the client manager, the connection to the users, we have put a lot, a bunch of the quarks and giving them to one client manager. So, and then the individual party regions each have their own client manager. And that way, any latency or any bandwidth between those uh, quarks is reduced. And also, we have three different servers now going out um, to the users which spreads out the bandwidth. So here in this example, we have taken the area, analyzed the uneven usage, and then allocated actors to maximize, well, minimize the hardware used, but maximize the utility um, of, the, um, of the simulation. And DSG, behind the scenes is synchronizing the contents of all these. So what if the physics engine moves something over here, that movement gets persisted and that movement shows up in the script engines and the client managers. So DSG is madly synchronizing all this stuff between the instances. Here is one uh, particular usage. This uh, I believe Douglas Maxwell is speaking tomorrow uh, as a keynote on some of the training that they're doing with large numbers of people uh, in a in a world so like you have like a village and you want to have village people and you want to have uh, soldiers interacting in there and so you need many many people and one setup we did with that is using some dedicated sister servers for the persistence engine, the physics, and the scripting. So those all happen in dedicated servers. But then there's connections out to a client manager that's in Europe, a pair of client managers that are in Virginia, and a pair of client managers on California. These were allocated um, to, uh, are on EC2, so they are you can create more if you wanted to in the connections. But one of the uh, cool things about this particular configuration is the uh, bandwidth to the users, the high bandwidth, is moved out to where the users are. And we can get hundreds of users here on the outside with only five connections to the, in, uh, the central servers. And so the bandwidth load on the central servers is greatly reduced and the bandwidth requirements to get to the actual users so that they see all the movements and that sort of stuff happen uh, out in the, in the network closer to the user. So this is one 
uh, configuration of DSG. Here's another uh, use of uh, the DSG. There's, um, this is a, um, a Galton box. Uh, you may have seen these at, um, at your, your local science museum or whatever. You drop the balls in the top and the balls bounce around on the uh, slats and they go down the uh, structure and form a polynometric distribution at the bottom. And um, this one is a, a very tall one with hundreds and hundreds of balls falling through it. They're kind of fun to watch uh, the balls fall down. But what we did was we allocated multiple quarks underneath. So this picture, the uh, diagram on the upper right, is uh, a top view. You can see the slats uh, across it. And the quarks are added um, with more in the center because that's where most of the load will be and fewer on the outside. And so we were able to allocate eight physics engines across this, uh, this Galton board um, to allow the simulation of all the, uh, all the hundreds of balls that are falling down it. And the little graph shows the ideal and the uh, uh, computed distributions, which are pretty close. Now, there are... Um, um, there are a bunch of things that we did to um, make effectively border crossings, that is the movement between two quarks, two adjacent quarks, uh, smoother. The, um, we have, so there's, there's a whole bunch of details behind this. There's uh, things called passive quarks, which are kind of pre-staging quarks to get uh, active objects next to the quarks so the transition is easier to make uh, make the crossings happen smoothly so the balls simulate properly as they go down the uh, the Galton board so there's there's a lot of stuff you can do with the smaller quarks and the quark infrastructure um, that allows for smoother smoother transitions of things uh, but um, the point of the slide is that this is another use of uh, needed many physics engine, needed better uh, allocation of physics, and then we were able to apply that multiple actors to this situation. So, um, how does one add DSG to your grid? Now, DSG, the sources are uh, publicly available, and they merge and compile with the current Open Simulator master. So you just take the uh, Open Simulator distribution, you add DSG to it, and um, uh, compile, and DSG is there. Then, then there's small matter of configuration, as with uh, everything in Open Simulator. Uh, and uh, DSG works with either the robust or the Simian grid services, so you can use uh, either one. Um, so what you do is you compile DSG into your simulators, you identify the regions for scaling and why you might want a scaling, you assign the um, grid map locations for the multiple instances, um, and this is a technical detail because of the way we integrated with Open Simulator is each of the instances gets its own grid um, location, so you can uh, find them. And then you uh, do the, uh, well, also all the actors, all the, uh, the peripheral ones other than the non-persistent one, all use null storage. So there's no database setting up on any of the um, actor instances that they get all their information from the persistence agent who is, or persistent actor who is the only one who has an actual database. So there's kind of one central server and... Um, uh, one central database and that's all fed to all the other regions uh, and then you just configure and run uh, as easy as that and like uh, like like the audience said it's a small matter of configuration so the uh, DSG sources are available um, under the same BSD license as open simulator they're at uh, this github location 
and it builds this part of Open Simulator by dropping it into the add-on modules directory. So we put it into add-on modules because that's an easy way of integrating with the pre-build XML and, and everything else. Um, there is documentation on the wiki and uh, bug reporting the issues there on uh, GitHub. And uh, the, the, the plans for DSG is over the next few weeks we are uh, beefing up the uh, documentation to include how-tos and cookbooks, uh, that sort of stuff, to make configuration and running DSG uh, easier and better. So, uh, distributed scene graph is an alternate architecture. It's a drop-in for Open Simulator, and so this is this is also a a um, uh, a pitch for how modular Open Simulator is. Uh, adding region modules or uh, drop-in functionality, I mean, even changing its underlying architecture is the modular architecture allows you to do that, and that's what we built on. Um, and so you can do distribution of your simulation. You can do augmentation of the simulation by adding more actors uh, with the DSG architecture. And we, are, we have a DSG... Uh, demo region running for the uh, Army Research Lab social event that'll be at 2.30 at PDT. You just hypergrid to atropia.militarymetaverse.org colon 80 colon atropia and uh, you will uh, magically end up in some DSG uh, region. If you uh, Once you go there, you'll notice you'll be in uh, atopia atropia dash cm one two three or four that is you'll end up in one of the client managers but even though you're in a different client manager you will see and interact with everybody else uh, that's in that same atropia region and so come come and visit us at 230 today pdt and uh, that's uh, my presentation are there any questions now, Robert, we have one. Uh, how dynamic is the allocation mechanism for actors? At the moment, the, the uh, configuration of actors is static. It happens at uh, boot time. Although the structure is built to allow uh, dynamic allocation. That is, um, the actors can come and go. And so what is missing from now from dynamic allocation is the smarts to uh, decide what to change and then to do it to to enact the change. But because of the way the actors are separate, we you can do things like uh, say the script engine crashes um, and just you know stops working for a bunch of quirks. You can just start the script engine again and it connects into the infrastructure and uh, starts scripting some more. So we've, um, one of the nice features of the separated actors is the ability to uh, start and stop the individual actors. And uh, we've used that, you know, if you ever find bugs in script engines or physics engines, you can just restart them and, and they continue on. Uh, and and that is, that's kind of the first part of the dynamic configuration. So, uh, the ability is there, but it's not implemented yet. All right, do we have any other questions? Okay, well, if, if not, please um, come and visit us uh, in Atropia and uh, uh, we can talk about it more there. And also, you, um, uh, I'm Robert Adams on OS Grid. I'm here. Um, I'm in the developers' channels. Uh, I am robert.adams at intel.com. Uh, feel free to talk to me or anyone on the Intel team to about uh, using of DSG. Uh, we can help configuration and uh, helping you uh, uh, get it going. Robert, we have one grid. more. Oh, excuse okay. me. The, the tour schedule. Um, the, the web says Sunday, uh, and you said that there will be the uh, the breakout 
uh, today sometime? Um, uh, let me look at my schedule. So at 2.30 today, there's the Air Force Research Lab Discovery Virtual Open House at 2.30 today. Um, so maybe there's a problem on one of the web pages, but the, the multicolored schedule page says it's 2.30 okay. today, and we, we will be there today. Okay. Uh, Atropia is open all weekend for the tour, uh, uh -huh. <laughs> and on the website uh, for 2.30 Sunday, a special event as well. Okay. Okay, and that sounds uh, like the end of the speech for today. Um, I want to remind the audience that uh, they can look at the conference schedule back at http colon slash slash conference dot open simulator dot org slash 2013 slash and that will bring up a lot of information for you about the conference uh, thank you Robert that was a very interesting very interesting presentation All right thank you mm-hmm